Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to cover all the best settings that you need to be using in Fortnite Chapter 3. Epic did not really add a ton of new settings this season, especially when compared to past new chapters, but they did change a lot of the existing ones. Some of these settings and the settings I'm going to show today include the best colorblind and brightness mode options, the most optimal rendering mode to get you the highest FPS, as well as a fix to the weird blurriness that you get on performance mode. Pretty much all of these settings I got from top tier pros or just kind of figured out myself. So on top of them working really, really well, I'm going to explain them and also give you my justification. Thus, I hope you're all excited. Timestamps should be integrated into the video as per usual. But without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, so to start off, we're gonna talk about performance mode and the random kind of blurriness that you now get. As you can see, if I go to my settings, which are annoyingly on the left side of the screen now, I don't know why they changed them. I guess you can still see them above my head, but like, why did you have to do that, Epic? Either way, if you go down, you can see I am on performance mode, which is now in beta. How many of you guys noticed it went from alpha to beta? They also changed the little, I guess, paragraph explaining what it does. Does. Essentially what Epic did outside of changing the way builds look, we're gonna cover that in a minute, don't worry, is Epic added anti-aliasing to performance mode. Now, I'm not sure how well you guys can notice it, my game looks a lot blurrier than in the past. You can see it in the loading screen, just looking at my character. You can actually see it the best when you slide. Look at the trees on my left, they're like insanely blurry. Do you see how blurry that is? I don't know why Epic added it, or well, I guess I do, I said it was anti-aliasing. I just just don't understand why they had to put it in. Either way, you know me, your boy has a fix, and one of the first ones is to go to your settings down in the top, or sorry, bottom left now, and what you're gonna do is you're going to go to your graphics quality. This is what it looks like if you're on performance mode. I'm gonna cover rendering modes after this, by the way, but you're gonna take your 3D resolution from whatever it's at. Mine's at 100. I'm gonna put it down to like 25. Basically any number that's not 100. Apply. Then go all the way back up to 100% and apply. Boom. And now before you say, but Jarian, that didn't do anything. Look when you slide, it's still blurry. That is true, little Timmy. That's not the best fix. It should fix some of your issues, especially if like your entire game looks blurry. So fix number two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab out, top right. I'm going to minimize the game really quickly. Wait, am I in zone? Oh no. Okay, well, it looks like we're running to zone, boys. In the meantime, I'm going to minimize the game. I am going to go to my GeForce Experience application. This is what it looks like. If you don't have this, you can download it from the internet. Bada bing, bada boom. You can see Fortnite is right there, but we're going to go to the drivers first. And what we're going to do, this helped me out a ton with my FPS this season, is you're going to click check for updates. Once the latest GeForce game ready driver comes up, it's currently 497.09. You're going to download that, and that should help your FPS out a ton. Wait, oh, I'm almost in zone, okay. Don't you just love windowed mode? But we're not done yet. Updating your drivers is important for not only your FPS this season, but also for fixing the blurriness because what we're going to do is right click on our desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel, and from here we're going to go to adjust image settings with preview. So that's the top left. What you want to click here is the middle one. Use the advanced 3D image settings. Don't click the top or the bottom. Use the middle and then hit take me there. What take me there does is it brings you to manage 3D settings that's right under the adjust image settings with preview one wait Oh, my character's stuck on a rock. We like Fortnite. And the trick here is you want to go to your image scaling. You can see it's the top feature. It should be the top for all of you guys under global settings. Mine is currently off and I have recommended it off in the past, but because Fortnite is randomly insanely blurry on performance mode, you're going to take it from off to on. So it says GPU scaling and sharpening. And then you're going to take this and you're going to bring it to around 55%. This is what I found personally looks the best. It removes most of the blurriness. Also, don't click the overlay indicator. We just want to sharpen the image so there's no more blurriness as we slide. 55% boys. Press OK. And then we're going to apply it. That has been applied. Let's see my... <laughs> My character is just auto running into a tree. Oh my gosh. I'm not sure if you guys can tell the difference. Let me kill the... Whoa! 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 Huh? 
Let me know if you can see a difference. I personally can see a huge difference in just how much sharper the image is. When I run to the right and left, when I build, edit, there's just no more blurriness. It's completely gone. You can also see, if you look at my weapons, I feel like they're a lot more sharpened. Like, the image does not look as bad as it does usually on performance mode. Performance mode in Chapter 3, that is, because it was working fine before Epic changed it. And now for the true tests, we're gonna slide. This will be the make or break. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so it's not as bad. I mean, I think it's impossible to fully remove the blurriness as you slide. I got rid of most of it just from moving normally and around my game. You can also see my FPS. It's barely moving from 240. Oh my, that's nice. Again though, all you're gonna do is just turn on image sharpening in your NVIDIA GeForce, or your NVIDIA control panel that is, and that should remove most of it. You can't get it all away, but it's the best you could do, man. Regardless though, let me know how it works for you guys, and now let's move on to the different rendering options. Onto the best rendering mode, I think you guys know what the answer is. It has not changed from last season to this one. In fact, it's probably gotten even clearer that performance mode is just the best. So the newest big change Epic made to performance mode is, regardless of whether you're on high or low meshes, your builds now kind of have a bubble wrap aspect. So what I mean by that is you can see the builds that have not, like the little pieces that have not placed yet, they're now blue before they were clear, and if I go to brick you can see it's like bubble wrap kind of you see all of them they're blue i guess it's easier to look at from the side but what this does is it gives a whole new look and feel to performance mode in chapter 3. And yes, for those of you that are like me and have noticed kind of how dull and almost dark, just kind of bad colors that performance mode now has, that is going to be the next topic right after this one. Because I don't know about you guys, this looks like trash. What we're going to do in the meantime, don't ask me how I got on DX11, is we're actually going to compare all the rendering mode FPSs. I guess we'll compare their builds because you can see right now, DX11 definitely got smoother in the past. The builds also, while you build them, they're white. Right when you place them, they're so freaking white, even metal. And that's not something you see on performance mode. Anyways, let me jump down. DX11 is kind of funny because when you break builds, like they shake. <laughs> I don't know why. Even trees, all of it, it just shakes. It's very kind of strange, but funny. So what we'll do is I'll look into the sky. I'll go to my settings. We will uncap our FPS. We'll go down here, prove I'm on DX11. We're going to turn on latency markers. That way we can see our input delay. And then we're going to turn on latency debug stats. So FPS, I'm looking into the sky. I am getting about 700, 800 FPS. And then over to our input delay, it seems up getting about three to four milliseconds of input delay it will most likely go up as i build yeah it's at like four and a half almost five i mean it feels better than it has in the past just kind of smoother overall because yes it did kind of get changed epic actually upgraded to unreal engine 5 that is what fortnite is on regardless let's go to performance mode with high meshes boom see you guys in a second Oh my gosh, performance mode compared to DX11, the anti-aliasing is so freaking bad. I turned off the image sharpening just because I didn't want to have it on the whole video, but I think I might need to. This is freaking ugh. Now looking up on performance mode straight to the sky, we're getting just about 900 FPS. I probably could get more if I was not recording on such a high quality as well as with face cam, and if I did not have the input delay thing on. Let me see that for a second so we'll go back yeah look at that why does that take away 100 fps that is messed up man i'm at a thousand fps when i turn off the latency markers so i mean if you guys play with this on you probably want to turn it off latency debug stats only have it on for science anyways though back to science we're getting 2.2.8 milliseconds of input delay it's definitely about a millisecond less than what was on dx11 and just remember this is high meshes Oh my lordy lord. Low meshes got a buff in freaking two different ways. Not only do you get better FPS now, just on everything, but because of the bubble wrap builds, you can actually see better on low meshes. Just watch this. 
Low meshes, remember, you have to be in the lobby. You don't have to restart your game on performance mode, but it is grayed out in game. You have to leave the game, turn it to low meshes. This is mobile builds. And would you look at that? There's still a random green block of grass in the middle of this map. <laughs> I don't know why low meshes does that. It's just a thing. And every time I show it, <laughs> I point it out. So looking up, it's about the same a little higher than high meshes. Wait, gotta turn off the low latency to get a thousand to make it look cool for the video. And low meshes is looking good. Just about 1050 FPS. So it's technically higher than high meshes, but really not by a lot. Input delay is two milliseconds. It's a tiny bit less than high meshes, but it is definitely less and it continues to be the best rendering mode to get the highest fps the lowest amount of input delay well i just teleported my game on this feels like absolute butter uh, uh seriously though like this is absolutely insane if you guys are on a low-end pc and you're not using this I don't even know what to say to you. You're out of your mind. And like I was saying, look at the builds now. They have the bubble wrap feature that mobile builds never had prior. You can see through builds so much easier. I'm box fighting someone. Look at this. I can see through all the way up until it's fully built. That's the only time where it actually looks like mobile builds. So now it looks pretty normal and then it becomes mobile builds. I mean, it's not awful. It's just as you're freaking building, it is so so much better now. Thank you, Epic. Thank you so much. So yeah, if you are on a low end PC, boys, make sure you are on mobile builds, aka low mesh performance mode. If you truly hate them, then yeah, it is fine to go to high meshes. I play on high meshes and well, I can't switch to it now. Both of them have the bubble wrap feature. I don't know why I'm calling it bubble wrap, but that's what it reminds me of. Those old bubble wrap builds where that hilarious clip is from. If you know you know. Wait, let me see the brick. Oh, and the metal. Oh, sorry. All we really have left to do now, though, is fix these gosh dang colors on performance mode because is it just me or are these absolute trash? I don't know exactly what Epic did to make the colors look like this. To me, it kind of looks like they raised the contrast a lot. Everything's darker. I think they might have made it less vibrant as well. And by the way, I'm only talking about on performance mode. If you go to DX11, DX11 does not look like this. DX11 is so much brighter, nicer looking. It kind of looks more like normal Fortnite. Look at this. I'm in the perfect position in the sun. The whole map, it looks nice, but like, I don't know. To me, it just does not look like it did last season. Again, performance mode specifically, which is kind of why we need a good colorblind mode to fix that. So don't roast me for this, but what I have found worked the best and what really made my game look nice is Tritonope 10. That is in the colorblind modes. My head blocks it, but Tritonope colorblind mode strength 10. You can see it already looks way brighter. And then guys, I'm gonna go a little crazy, but underneath my head in the graphics settings, I have been cranking my brightness to 150%. I'm not trolling. Stretch does this as well, even though I think he's on DX11. Apply it. We got my face back. Boom. And look at my game! Boys, this is how Fortnite is supposed to look. It looks so freaking nice on performance mode. Oh my gosh. Literally the only thing that looks different are my kind of weapon colors. You can see the purple is a little brighter. The blue is brighter. That definitely does not look how normal performance mode did, you know. That's actually how Trident Ope 10 would look if we were on the normal performance mode. High and low meshes. I know I'm on low meshes, but it's for high and low meshes. Whatever Epic did, when you crank your brightness and go to Trident Ope 10, the game looks so much better. It looks like how performance mode used to last season. Bro, look at my game. It looks so freaking nice. Usually, I would never recommend 150% brightness because that would just drown out your game. You can see my set settings look weird because they're just so bright and not colorful. I don't even know. But in game, it looks so nice. <laughs> It's so much freaking better. Now on DX11, I think normal, just no colorblind mode is good. You could crank it up to 150%. That is what Stretch uses. To add on to it though, this is what the storm looks like. And I don't know about you guys, but I think this is better than normal performance mode. Look how it looks compared to the grass. You can see the storm so easily. It's like a light blue compared to the dark green. Even in the water, I can see it. Oh, Goldbird. Dead. 
Let me go back. Wait, hold on to normal. 100%. Go, 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 go. And this is the normal zone. It's so much darker and harder to see. Oh no, I'm too slow. Come on, I'm making a video epic. <laughs> Bro. One last comparison though. This is how the game looks with no colorblind mode. Not bad. I mean, I'm not saying it looks terrible. This is how zone looks. And then this is how the game looks with Triton Oak 10, 150% brightness. Apply. Oh my gosh. It's so much nicer. Ah, 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 ah. Even zone. Dude, it's lighter. It contrasts more. <laughs> Uh, therefore, that is what I recommend in terms of colorblind mode. You can fool around with your NVIDIA control panel and actually change your digital vibrance, which is what I usually recommend. But I feel like Triton Oak 10, 150% brightness. It looks incredibly nice. You don't even need to change that. As I slide, oh. And for the last time, boys, this is only for performance mode. DX11 does not need these colors. The zone is really easy to see on DX11. Easier than this by a lot. So yeah, use my colorblind mode, use performance mode as well, and fix your blurriness. You're welcome. Wait, we're not done yet. To finish off the video, I just want to show the full settings because I know people will ask for it. So under graphics quality, remember, use performance mode. View distance, put that on low or near. There's actually a clip that I saw on Reddit where a guy had low view distance and he was able to see someone in one of like the new bushes. I don't even know what you call them. They're basically stacks of grass. And the guy saw his opponent, he killed them, all because he had view distance on near. After that, we have textures. Again, I recommend putting this on low. If you want to know how to uninstall high quality textures, that's the thing it says on the right that are not installed. Go watch this video. I explain everything about it, how to uninstall them, and how to get way more space on your PC. But then lastly, meshes. You could either use high or low. I showed the differences. I showed low meshes is technically better, especially since they now have the bubble wrap feature. Then V-Sync, turn off. That thing is crap. Show FPS, put that on, and run rendering mode, use performance mode beta. It's the best. Wait, Jerry, and wait, what if I'm on DX11? Okay, little Timmy, I'm only doing this for you. Graphics quality options, these are what yours should look like for DX11, little Timmy. Put quality presets on low, 3D resolution 100%, then all of these bad boys, put them on near, off, or low. All of them should be on the lowest possible. Then over to advanced graphics, you're gonna have V-Sync off, motion blur off, off. Allow multi-threaded rendering on. Latency markers, put this off. I only had that on for science. Use GPU crash debugging off. NVIDIA reflex low latency, you can either have on on plus boost or off. Booga uses it off and so does stretch, I believe. But I've actually had a good experience with on plus boost and then latency flash, put that off. These are what your settings should look like. DX11, remember, you don't need any sort of colorblind. Just use what you prefer. Use everything I showed in this video. And and enjoy chapter 3. Overall guys, those are the best settings to use in Fortnite Chapter 3. So if you guys enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Remember boys, if you use my code for the battle pass, just let me know on either Twitter or Instagram, mainly Twitter. That is how you get a shout out. Otherwise, that is it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.